But the heading's already dialed in. <clears throat> heading dialed, time me a step. One meter of altitude, is that what you got there? 1.5? Uh, is, uh, yeah, what do you need, Fabio? Adjust the video, Ed. Uh, stand by, let me get the RV set. Yeah, how did you want the video adjusted? We're still working on altitude. That's probably close to our... Probably the best as we're gonna get. Okay. Yeah, just a tap in the zoom. Uh, are you seeing something on the corners? No, no, it's just that <clears throat> we want to eliminate the, the foreground that's not illuminated. So uh, we are... At so one, like there? Oh, because we're at 1.9. I guess we're going to come down to a little bit. Wait, are you moving? Yeah, I just yeah. Um, mm -hmm. moved past that cable there. Yeah, past Super the cable. Dragon. So we have this... Um, Hose hanging down in the front for the. Yeah. Uh, just want to make sure it didn't get caught in that cable there. We have the uh, cutter hose hanging down, so it's probably about as low as we can go without dragging it. So this is our altitude? Yeah, I'll try and come down. Let me know when you have the altitude. I'll work on the f-stop then. Do you have it set on auto depth, not altitude? No, it's auto altitude. Oh, okay. So gray means it's on. Okay, that... Okay. I got gotcha. you. So you can get away with stepping down if you do it in point one, depending on how high you are. If you do that <coughs> with a bigger step or whatever, it'll drag. But I'm looking at that thing yeah. on the front there. It's hanging down probably half a meter or so. <coughs> do we have down lights on? Yeah, or do we not so. want those on? He's going to probably want, you want, we'll want those on. <laughs> Oh, they're on. Okay. Laser's on, downlight's on. All right, Atalanta's in its kind of final position there, and we're going to be heading 314. You can zoom in and touch there. Yeah, as soon as the camera stops tilting. Well, I was tilting, so I know where to zoom in. Zoom in just a little. I still have stuff there. Zoom in a little more. I'm working on it. That's good. Is that too much, Fabio? Or? No, it's good. All right. Are we steady in our altitude? Yeah. Okay. You can, you can start the ship moving. Uh, you're coming up can again. Do, we'll be going 314. Roger. So we're What's your altitude? Uh, 1.6, 1.5. Bridge nav. Seems like you're coming down. Around We'd like to step 1,000 meters, one kilometer, bearing 314, and the speed is 0 0.3. Speed 0 0.3. I'm just going to put altitude unknown. Altitude is 1.4. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Bridge. Can you say? Yes, uh, by GP, 1,000 meters. Three one four zero point three knots. That's correct. Thank you. And Fabio, I'm leaving this at a constant exposure, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's at F seven point one. Altitude is one point five, one point six. One point two now. It'll vary till we get going, eh? And the ROV can't, you know, two little thrusters can't keep it that accurate unless it's moving. So I crank up the Z gain and then it will oscillate a lot faster. All right, that ship move is called in for a kilometer. We might have to tack on a little more at the end to make our target, but 
think they max out at a kilometer. Okay, right. Uh, let me know when you're ready to go. We gotta wait for Atalanta to yeah. start. You don't do anything. Just watch. I'm just watching. You'll see. Watching the grasshopper. So what we you saw what I was doing here? Yeah. Yeah. So when I hit this, she'll just take off. It will go, and you'll have a to go. So you'll have to click that every, and they'll stack. I, mean, I can like stack four or five in there. But to come out of it, if you want to take control of the vehicle, you just, you just hit, hit auto X Y. Yeah, and take it out of auto X Y. <coughs> and yeah, you'll see what we have to do here now this happen but we'll have to adjust these speeds as we go on so <coughs> and there's always the uh so hit clear first and one five and <coughs> we think it's knots but we don't know <coughs> could be meters a second could be knots We'll start out with meters a second, which would be 0.3 knots. Yeah. <laughs> it's still, I mean, we've like empirically <laughs> tested it so many times and we're still not quite sure it, <laughs> because it's I don't a, know if it's like Atalantis. It's a random number that you yeah. tweak to stay in the box. Yeah. It won't, so it doesn't have say it in any file. What's that? The any file doesn't tell you what. It says it's a random number that you tweak to stay in the box. <laughs> we've been, yeah, we've been very sure in both directions. <laughs> <coughs> but it will fly a razor straight, razor straight line. <coughs> what you have to watch for is um, if the train starts coming up. <laughs> time I'll step down is like if it's point one and we're just sitting there and I'll do a couple clicks but I typically won't do that while the vehicle's flying along the transect. Okay. see where I step down gently there but that you can see the oscillation and the yeah. roof on it. So that should obviously smooth out once the vehicle's moving forward. But <coughs> it's a little wonky at first because um, until we get the whole thing moving, right? Six, eight, tether, vehicle, everything moving. Then it's easier to tweak it a little to keep it constant. So <coughs> a lot of times when we're doing these transects, we have a lead in for, you know, 50 meters or something to get everything. Like if we're doing a, a grid, well, they'll have so 20, 30, whatever meters at the end of each grid overlap. To kind of slow down and... Well, no, to get uh, everything, you know, trucking yeah. along, right? You can't just, like, start here and take off. No, because you're going to have... Speaking of, uh, Atalanta just started to move slowly, and... Um, yeah, so you'll have to do the slow... Does someone have their speaker on in here? I don't think so. No? Ed, he's got, yeah, something. Oh, Ed's... He's, he's got so many knobs in front of him. <laughs> he's got Go ahead, Bridge. Knobs. Check, check, check. Check. Uh, yes, that's okay. We will monitor the um, we will monitor the cable on on the after the ship to make sure that it doesn't um, that doesn't touch. Thank you. Yeah, we'll just have to watch that over time. That's one of the things, so just like, because we're going backwards here, is we just watch the wire cam to make sure. But it's like really far down, so it shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't. Yeah, do yeah. the math. Yeah. It yeah. would basically have to be two miles away from the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> from the launch point to touch, right? Oh, yeah. Maybe not two miles. It would have to be 
It's usually like when it's super shallow, it's not a worry, right? Because it moves along with us. When it's super deep, it doesn't, it's not really weird. There's like somewhere in the middle where you can overrun and about start to see it, start to see it come. But I don't, I've never touched before. You'd have to be, the speed with which you'd have to be going here is like, <laughs> like you, you basically lost control of the vehicle or so, of, of the vessel, which, you know, yeah. that's the only times I've ever seen it come close or at a crazy like side angle. When like when we look in the aft cam, yeah. 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 We're doing like two knots backwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and Adelant is uh, quite a bit ahead. To starting to get to B. Let's see. Uh, so now you'll off. hit uh, step forward. Step uh, forward. Uh, I did. Yeah. So now you have a goal to go 73 meters. Then get close to uh, zero. You hit it again. Well, I can tap it again, then oh. I have double the goal. I can tap aft and I have half the goal, so they stack. Gotcha. So then I can play with the speed here. Yeah, once we get back in the so box, we'll hone right it back. That's great. Um, it's not a really good ramp up or ramp down so to So can it. we log to start? Yes. But I usually like to start out slow because um, the vehicle porpoises a bit because it comes, um, it's like... Ed, I think I'm going to want another tap in the zoom. Like there? Uh, let's see some big stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's probably good. Okay, good. That. It, um, when it first takes off, it, it doesn't. It ramps up quite quick. Mm -hmm. So, so you get out. So the the vehicle does this. If you watch the pitch, it boom, and then the altitude goes wonky. So the whole thing kind of goes oh. wonky until we get until it stabilizes. Yeah, and then it uh, has the tether drag effect. What was the pitch noise control? again? What's that? What was the pitch noise again? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, Hook doesn't have launch control? <laughs> it works, uh, it works quite well for... Especially if we're doing a bunch of tracks and we want to do them razor straight next yeah. to each other. Oh yeah, definitely. I was flying this thing right hand, it looked like a drunken sailor. Well, you're still operating it, right? It's, it's yeah. Just no, I mean, still being pilot, I, I, I get that. I you can do the same thing, uh, but Atlantis, still. That's weird. You're right there. See hook in the box. Are you playing with these buttons at all? No. I've seen it wiggle like that. You put heading speed at 10, isn't that what it's supposed to be? Like setting speed? That's where it normally is. So it's happy. Did you change the joy gain? Yeah, I played around with it, so uh. I'm not sure what that actually does. There's no joy. Is this looking okay, uh, Fabio? Yeah, it's looking good. I'm just wanting a... Uh, Might help 
a little bit. That's what Uru Kai's got. Joystick on the oh yeah on the captain seat. We don't have a fun box. Just on the ragged edge of our minimum altitude there, you see the Doppler dropping beams. Yeah. Um, the dragging the uh, dragging the bottom. Uh, it's good to about 1.2 meters. It's that's what do we figure out, Randy? If you're. Oh yeah, for uh, we yeah. did all that. Yeah. But like Danny was saying, we've got that cable hanging down below us. Yeah, I don't see it dusting up there. We got a cable, we got a hose dragon, we got all kinds of good stuff. And we got that vacuum hose down there too. And Lance is really wonky wiggling. Oh, the vacuum hose is all tucked up, it's just the hose and the two shackles there in the front that are hanging down. We could we could have picked them up at the uh, craft and just held them in our hand. I've got it turned off right now. Oh. So yeah, the delta will creep obviously if we're slowly creeping up hill or downhill. <laughs> Roger. So I'm going to slow okay. down now, I'm getting too far out, so I'm in clear, point one five. So I get, keep that, keep it in the box as usual. Okay. Sometimes I find this more work than just find a fucking vehicle. There's something wonky there, it's like... There's a Red Bull, uh... Looks like it's only doing one... Oh, that's better. Weird. So yeah, if everything goes right, we keep uh, enough of this in, I can just step a whole bunch of these so it's... A thousand meters, there you go. That's it. Still watching the sonar and... Look, Atlanta Coke, and Coke, uh, Diet Coke. All that stuff. The Thompson used to... Uh, oh, God. Another can. The Thompson used to, uh, on the way back in, throw all the aluminum cans off the back of the boat. You probably remember that. No. And the cardboard. All the cardboard and the aluminum cans would all be... That's illegal. Not past 12 miles. Yeah, they did it outside of the zone. They still do it? Uh, no idea. And cardboard, one thing, but not not aluminum can. We were going back in and uh, <coughs> uh, Atlant uh, uh, Atlanta. Once um, Alvin's 
ship's name? Uh, Atlantis. Atlantis had been there before and found a uh, cardboard box, one of the wax covered one that was Atlantis written on the side of it. <laughs> I think they stopped doing it. They got enough grief from the scientists. The aluminum cans was just like ridiculous because, you know, it's like plenty of people who will take those. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Um, so, you know that big five gallon bucket full of nuts and bolts you had at, uh, at the shop? Yeah. That was on a tugboat, and uh, the chief engineer, was a new chief engineer, came on board and was like, oh, we don't need all these hardware and everything, and emptied all the hardware drawers into a five gallon bucket. Just completely solid. And I was like, what are we doing that with that? He's like, oh, I'm offloading it when we get in the shore. I'm like, why? Why are we doing this? I come down for watch one day, and that bucket is empty. <laughs> I asked, the, uh, I, I found a video of the back deck, him pouring it over the back as we're, cru as we're cruising. Just like a complete full of stainless hard, uh, hardware, you know, quarter inch, five, five sixteenths, mm -hmm. half inch. <coughs> Thousands of dollars of hardware. <laughs> no idea why he decided to do that, but get the company to buy new, I guess. I don't Probably know. tired of pawing through all that junk looking for a quarter inch bolt. Yeah, it wasn't well organized. Danny, I don't know if you remember, but on the ET shop on the Thompson, I know this is 10 years ago. It really was 10 they, years ago. I'm they, trying to remember where the ET shop was. Uh, it was right uh, forward of... Uh, forward of the labs. Yeah, the lab space. Oh, yeah. um, lab. Still there. There's a very small tool chest they had on board, and they had one drawer for screwdrivers. And it was marked like Phillips left, slotted right. So if you put a Phillips in there, you had the, the handle on the left and the slot. And somehow, with, you know, 60 people on that boat using that tool chest year after year, it always stayed organized exactly that way. I don't know if... Still there? I was yeah. just in it last I year. I don't know who keeps it that organized or if just somehow that everybody follows the standard. It makes it very easy to use. If I remember correctly, the ET shop was very... Uh, small. Out. Small. It was small. So that, but it was also very... But um, they had like spectrum ETs analyzers only. and stuff in there. Yeah, they still don't like it one. Or are you yeah. there looking for a No, spider? no, not at all. Cause Engineering's <laughs> not allowed. I wonder if the engineering uh, machine shop still looks the same as I have. I left it. Yeah, I don't know. I took all the tools off the wall. I polished all the, so the aluminum back plates with all the tool hooks. Oh, nice. I polished everything in there. My Very it was large machine. I, I took the, got the swirling machine look on everything and I took and made every tool out and traced it. So here's something larger, Fabi. Is this looking okay? I'm hearing a yes. Looks good. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah, there, there's a, uh, a research organization that was known for uh, at one point in time leaving uh, plastic plank pink flamingos at their <laughs> uh, study sites. I've heard about that. No longer done. But are they not leaving flamingos anymore? I don't believe they are. Maybe we should start something with bobbleheads or... Uh, I don't see uh, why a pink flamingo would be any different than a plastic bucket lid. Well, we do lots of those. Those are usually up off, I guess, I don't know. Too, yeah. Dive weight and a five-pound bucket lid with a number on it or a sign on it. They sink after a while around the vents, no matter where you put. Did you ever find uh, Marker E out at Axial? What's that? Did you ever find Marker E at Axial? I don't know. Were we looking mm. for it? Uh, I don't know. It might still be there. 
Like your E. The yep. critters. Yeah, it's capital E mm -hmm. on a uh, bucket lid. The um, critters crawl up and start living on them, and then they sink. <laughs> if you uh, if you ever find it, it's got a giant E on it, and then right next to the E, tiny, tiny, tiny letter D. <laughs> Found a lot of sunken markers. I wonder how well traffic cones are handled for like just markers. Too big. What the little mini traffic cones? Yeah, I think they get blown all over the place. They too big of a profile in the water column. Is it me or is the heading wiggling? Uh, we do have a squiggle. Heading in, out. What's your altitude range? It's just been uh, barely in the still have Doppler range. I see the beams are flicking in and out. It oscillates. Everything's oscillating. I mean, this is. Mm. It definitely struggles a little more with the longer tether okay. to do this. So one point one. Need to to 1.7. What's that? Different tether must need a different tuning. Oh, is this more? It's more drag. Yeah. This is the uh, kind of transect that uh, killed uh, Luca. That what? Killed it? With, uh, so we had TMS back here, and we were driving ahead of the TMS. And basically, tether laying over the back of the, the oh, back of the foam, we'd have this drumming effect. Mm -hmm. And right at the bend, enough bends that it arced right there. Mm -hmm. That's how we lost the vehicle. You see it in this back of the tether cam, sitting the whole tether, sitting there strumming. strumming. You should not have a. Megacon on that vehicle? Oh, we do. We do have a Megacon. Yeah, there's <coughs> something doesn't sound right there. It wasn't a phase-to-phase uh, -phase arc. It was a uh, salt water, uh, phase to ground, uh, high voltage to ground water. Tell it. Water shut down before it. It should have, but we were at you know 4,700 meters and seven kilometers of cable on the on the spool and capacitance in the in the line. <laughs> I'm still not buying it for. Well, you would have to sustain that arc for minutes to... No, it was a clear... Blew the cable apart. I think it was Elvis. Yeah, I think it was Elvis. Well, we had lots of theories when we were uh, sitting down there after we pulled the TMS up. We had lots of theories of, uh, you know... Um, Russian spies and uh, sharks and aliens. Sharknado. I've ignited a lot of tethers on a weekly basis on some jobs, on construction jobs. I don't never, rarely even have enough physical damage to see where the 
short is much less uh, part of the tether. Well, maybe it didn't do that, but that's what we we got out of it, and that's what we... That's the official story. That's the official story. <laughs> <laughs> I have to call BS. So, Dan... It sounds good. The tether blew apart. <laughs> I can um, show you the... Uh, you should see our official story when Atalanta or Argus spontaneously. <coughs> Dan, when we go from, I mean, it's just yeah, a trivial point at this point, going from 1.1 meter to 1.7 meters, right. the I'm um, at fixed iris f7.1. I'm going from 40 percent, like 38 percent luminance, to like 54, 52 percent luminance, which is just an indic, you know, and and the cl it's um it's uh, almost exponential as you get closer to the sea floor. We have to make greater adjustments in iris. So that's one of the things we have to do over here because if we were to put this in auto iris, the iris would look okay. It, it rolls it on and off the same as we do. Right. But when you take it out of auto iris, there's a ginormous jump in it that's very visible. So if we were to leave it in auto iris, as soon as we, like, if we see it, you know, a mermaid, and we hit auto iris to try and expose it better, we lose the shot. So if I were sitting over here riding iris all the time. Well, sometimes, maybe I did this with you the other day, Danny. We'll tell the pilot I'm going to come off of the iris, so if you see it getting brighter, you're descending. If you see it getting darker, you're going up. A nice visual guide for the pilot, so if we're not trying to get a keeper shot. Yeah, that tether was parted, Danny. There was no possible way. It's definitely was parted. Well, it was definitely it parted. It's obvious by looking at it. But the problem is, is we literally, the TMS was just barely behind us. We were in the abyssal seafloor. There was nothing there. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it hit something. There was nothing there. It couldn't have hit anything. We were watching, we had view from the TMS. It probably was parted when you came in or out, and then it just happened to let go at that time while you were transiting. Well, the new Teva has uh, double the strength of this one, so. Hey, Dan, what's on the deck around behind you to the right? Mr. Mm -hmm. Cormany, what's on the deck right behind you to the right? Further back, further back, behind the black tape, all the way to right there. Nope, further down, on not on the what riser, right there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a while. What is it? Is that yours? No. It's ready. Oh, it's one of the rubber duckies. It's Send it down to the. Is it still his birthday? It is. Uh, watch change of video. This will be change. easy. How many times did they try and uh, turn it back on after that? Or at all? None. Yeah. When we lost everything, we. Everything went black. The ground fault trick tripped. Uh, we slowly powered up the TMS first. Didn't send any power to the uh, vehicle, so mm -hmm. Teva was dead. We started reeling in the te uh, reeling in the TMS, and were you, were you out with it when it? I was it. I was. I was sitting right there. Uh -huh. Was that the uh, first time out of the TMS? No, we were cruising. In, in and out of the TMS a bunch of times during the dive? No. We're doing a Bissell Plain C, uh, transect. You inspect the, uh, so it was like the first dive came out of the TMS only once? No, this was well into our cruise. we mm. done multiple type of terminations already. Um, yeah. We ins Every time we... Unstack, we inspect Teva. I mean, we're religious about that Teva. Well, it 
Sparks parted to me. See where it's cut. <clears throat> so have Kevlar in it? Well, yeah. <laughs> you have to have a lot of force to. Try and see if I had pictures of. Even if you sustained an arc for quite a while, I don't think we would have seen it. We we went we we had we, we saved all of our engineering uh, logs. We uh, the Megacon has a log. Our ground fault system has a log. Yeah, the Megacon would have tripped right away, so it wouldn't have sustained an arc for more than a couple milliseconds. We were cruising, everything was beautiful, and all of a sudden, just full black van. Megacon tripped, everything tripped. So, But now we have a different design tether. More Dacron. It didn't break off at the termination. How far up was it from the? Is that where? It, is that where it parted? Yeah. That's it sitting on the bottom of the ocean, untouched. Is there a Kellums? Was there a Kellums there? Nope. What? We have a we have a what we call a um, puck at the bottom of the tether, so. It's an aluminum puck that bolts into the bottom of the chimney, and we feed into it the Kevlar. Then we use that uh, potting compound that they use on like anchor uh, hoist ropes, mm -hmm. and it's you know expires every six months. You buy new. We make sure that's all good. Or well, keeps it from getting caught between the buoyancy blocks. Right about the. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's out the side. Huh? You mean uh, um, through the sides? Yeah, what well, keeps it getting caught from getting caught in here and here? Uh, it doesn't fit. Looks like it'll fit. Happens to be about the same length too. Hey, Dan. Yo. We're doing tracing down an audio issue over here. Roger. Can you do me a favor and just grab your boom microphone very lightly and just move it slightly? All right, try and move it away from you like this, like further away from your mouth. Huh. I think your headset, try and move it up. It's got a wire loose. It's a wire loose? You hear it when he moves it, it though, right? It's yeah. a big, like, click. Yeah. I don't hear it. If I'm not hearing it right. Wait, are you on SPL? Now. What's that? Are you on SPL? Yeah. Okay. Huh. I didn't hear it then, but you've I heard it before. I didn't, hear it. I didn't hear it when he started moving it up, but when he went like this. Yeah. Oh, when it touches my... No, it's no, a, it's a, like, it a shock. It's a pot. Huh. Go like this, Matt. Well, I never do that to it. No, but... Why would I do that? No. Uh -huh. Okay. Man. Yeah. All right. Thanks for trying. <laughs> I swear it arced. <laughs> then it exploded. Very in. 
imperceptible speed change. Pretty perceptible there. So you're thinking maybe it grabbed a side? I don't know, something. See the uh, <coughs> six eight down there in the shop with the pinhole in it. That's usually what they look like when they short out. And the ground fault kicks off. Yeah. <coughs> it's like you know you can't even you can't even tell. Yeah, we have that. We've had that issue before with the uh, green one where we pulled it up and there was a split in it where there was a burn mark. Oh. And we pulled the sleeve back and you can see a pinhole and that's what. That was a new termination on that Teva too. Uh, no, not new, new, but it was a couple dives on it. Yeah, well, might, have, might have got caught between the buoyancy blocks. Shouldn't have severed though. I mean, it's not like we were pulling on it hard. No, that one usually banana peel it. You know, like a loose suck yeah. along the kellums, or it will, uh, they'll part and they'll stretch, so you'll have a whole bunch of Kevlar hanging out. That looks like it was guillotined. And no, we do not have a guillotine on to TMS to uh, release the cracking. The only crack time in. I've seen them guillotine that hard is when you contact the TMS with <coughs> much violence. Uh, we have done that, but not. Not super crazy, like, you know, it folds over, that's what's well, sucking I've, in. I've smashed them hard enough, you know, where, or like, they hit a couple times, and then once it's dead, by the time you get it back in, it's pretty mangled, but they, <coughs> uh, yeah, I haven't seen one part like that. Weird. That's why we don't grab the, the uh, beacons with the <laughs> jaws. <laughs> yeah, that was unfortunate. <laughs> the head's cheap. <laughs> yeah, but not when you're on a cruise, and that means now you have to jumble different... Play the beacon shell game? Exactly. Yeah, um, well, and our beacons have you know, distinct personalities and opinions about when they want to work, so. We had to play the beacon show game all last year. <coughs> we wound up replacing uh, two of the penetrators and for ground faults, which is really weird. It's like we had a, you know, run of bad penetrators. Really un... Like something else I haven't seen, of having to replace several penetrators in a batch. That's weird. We've seen it before, but yeah, usually a batch. But TI you know. or aluminum penetrators or no, they're the they're subcon eight pins. Yeah, but are they oh. the TI ones or the stainless or sonar target? Ooh, you gonna run into something? Possibly. Should miss it. Oh, it's a fish, maybe. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely got to get us to get an upgrade in our uh, Sea King because it does not look that good on our green seas. Yeah, green sea. Has some wonkiness. Mm. 
tomorrow morning the tempered tub will be full? Okay. I'll be sleeping. Me in that thing. You need to reconsider your priorities. <laughs> yeah, sleep. Never been in it, never planned to. Well, maybe if it got hot. I mean, I'd be in it if it was hot water. But surface water over here? Yeah, no thanks. Uh, it's going to be like a polar bear plunge. Why don't they set, like put hot water in it? I don't know. It wouldn't be hard to circulate off the cooling system in the engine. That's what we used to do on the Tully. We had an engineer would run a hot water hose out of the, uh, run it up out of the engine room on the deck and then mm -hmm. would come up outside of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Was this a regular red hose with a squirt handle on the end? Yeah, just let it. Tully would be rocking and rolling. Just and have it run. It I mean, up. you just, it's the, it's the cold, it's the hot, it's the hot water off the heat exchanger. I mean, yeah. it's not like your free hot water. It's free hot water. And let it overflow. It don't matter. No, you have to, because when it's rocking and rolling, right? Exactly. People are getting in and out. And if you're afraid it's going to be too uh, too hot, you put a Y in it and then put the cold, uh, cold salt water in with it. Shallow valve. Oh, that's a pretty anemone. It is. Is that a mushroom anemone? A mushroom anemone? Yeah. I, I don't know. Sure. It looks like kind of looks like the open flytrap ones. Yeah, that's not what that is. It's something else. But I don't know what. I've never seen that one before. But it was impressive. I want to look at one of these sea pens that I keep seeing. Should do a midnight gauge check. check. Mm -hmm. There's one of those anemones that I looked at. That's neat. Seventy-two meters to go. Yep. That's benthic transects for ya. Well, this would be a nice one to annotate, you know. Yeah, lots of Just enough there. animals, but there. not too many. Did you see that ONC was hiring? <laughs> oh, yeah. They're hiring data stewards. They're always hiring. Yeah, but, you know, I might have to, like, move to Canada, move to Canada which isn't a bad choice. It's just a cold choice, and that is a very difficult choice for me. Actually, Sydney's probably one of the warmest places in Canada. Banana belt there. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that really sells it for me. <laughs> Beautiful weather there, better than Oregon, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, if I was gonna Hawaii. choose, <laughs> so very different. A place on the mainland to live. That was going to be cold. Sure. When I retire there, I can. It looks really pretty. With my oxygen bottle up to Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to go to the big city, Vancouver's just a hop and a skip. Yeah, very right away. 
Yeah, the ferry looks like fun. Which ferry? The ferry to Vancouver. Oh, it's fun for the first time, but if you depend on it for like commuting or anything, the the joy slowly fades away. Oh, I'm sure. Like sure. if you depended on a boat for commuting places, it wouldn't be that much fun. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. But it is fun if you're just like, I'm gonna go on an adventure. Let's take a boat. You bring fairy pops. Fairy pops. Fairy pops. Yeah. What are fairy pops? Triple O's is always fun. Get a hamburger. Do you guys have Ikea? Up yeah, they call it Triple O's. Oh, did they change that? I don't know. I think they have Ikea. Do you guys have Ikea? Hmm. Vancouver, we got Ikea, yeah. Oh, uh, AJ. Yeah, yeah I still can't hear uh, DVL, um, now. DVL decided to go wonky. Um, I, c I can hear you with my left ear. Well, I don't know. I'm on my microphone here on SPL. Yeah, right. Dirk was kind of quiet earlier, yeah, too. Yeah, I can barely hear Dirk. All right, I'm turning you all the way up. I'm working on it. Hang on. Don't make any crazy adjustments. Okay. Press, press. Pete's got it. It's a shift reset. There should be a shift save. Yeah, that is not an easy with the shifts on offsets here. Oh, it's very difficult. Isopods there's that another, I didn't get to see. another reason to do 12 hour watches, 12 hour shifts. You'd only have to do that monkey business twice a day. All right, do you guys wanna give it a shot? Yeah, how's that? Oh that yeah, I can hear you now. All right, um, Nav, mm -hmm. what surveys do you have programmed in there? Oh, I, I only have the one we're doing right now programmed in. Okay, could I but give you the next one? Next but one I hear you have, there the was acute. another line you wanted to do, number seven. The acute A. Yeah, one. we'll I do seven do after this. Okay. So I'll give you, I can give you three points, although it's pretty much a straight line, but I'll give you three points. How about two? Can okay, I, I think I have those three <laughs> points in um, this table. Oh, yeah. If you've got the table, then you're in good shape. Yeah, I got the table. Is that okay. Mine? So we could do Give seven. Uh, this looks. This may be last. This is the old dive. I don't know. Part Twenty. C. Oh yeah. Okay. This is now. Mine. Is the last point in the table the far point on the on the map? Um. Yeah, but we can do it in reverse. Okay. So yeah, we can start at the lat long three and work our way back to lat long one. Sounds good. Skipping lat long two. Uh, no, passing through lat long two. Oh. Yeah. Right. Um, What's up with all these like dog leg deals? Yeah, yeah I, I don't, I don't really know. I guess it's, um, you realize that ROVs back. don't turn like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You just break <laughs> them into two shorter surveys. Yeah. Well, you know, to get to this, to, to stop at that point, that's a little challenge. Yeah, it's all right. I think it has to do with this idea of it being like random segments. Okay. And so they've taken two random segments and turned it into one survey. Interesting. Um, that is probably the most interesting benthic survey plan I have ever I seen. I, yeah, I've never <laughs> seen anything quite that interesting before. <laughs> Usually they just choose a random bearing well, the, the junior scratch, the junior scientist picture. gave it to his three-year-old and said draw some lines on the map that's <laughs> kind of what it looks like <laughs> and you put waypoints on them oh, it's like a whole bunch of spiders are <laughs> hanging around the ip <laughs> so our bug out time for any video surveys is going to be like three okay because we want to have that mooring pop by four so maybe more like 2.30, we want to start getting towards the mooring. Can we pop this so one? we might <laughs> not get all of Survey 7 um, finished. That's a big sea pig. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to be heading back towards the IP. So once yeah. we get close, we can always break off. Yeah. OK. Cool. Sounds like we're all set up. Great. So are we doing this one right now? Right now, I think we're doing 15. 15? No, 16. 16, we're doing yeah. 16, okay. 
Yeah, the last watch was just like, pick one. Pick one. The one that's the straight line. Perfect. That's, that's exactly what he did. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. Eat it. So then it wasn't randomly chosen. It was chosen for its uh, non-silliness. <laughs> yes. Many chosen. The machine is the random chooser, and then we just pseudo-randomly choose from there. Unless the machine was pseudo-random to begin with. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Yeah. It was bulky. It, the machine should have ran randomly chosen, you know, your 20 bearings. <laughs> and then you <laughs> could have well, gone from there. I know in certain programs, like, for example, Python, uh -huh. the, the random function is actually pseudo-random. So it'll create these variables. But if you set your kernel at like a specific point in time it will always make the same sequence of numbers ah, yeah. so you got to scramble your kernel every time you could just like go to a random number generator and tell it to generate a list of 20 numbers from 0 to 360 yeah yeah but i think it's still kind of the same concept if you always start like let's say you have a random number generator like a random number table it's always going to pick from the same spot in the random number table really yeah because yeah. yeah. that's how random. random generators work okay so a lot of times you have to set like where to start on the random table and so usually good practice is to um start it based on the current time because every current time is different um, so it'll start in a different place on the table. Yet time is not random. Is that why so you're yeah, I guess we'll never truly get randomness. Let's just toss die every time <laughs> from yeah, here on out. Yeah, roll it. What's the increment? See, that's why we needed to print a d20. Yep. <laughs> oh God. I wonder why it's a big scrutiny line. It's like point one. Yeah, it's not oscillating that. No, it's... It's slow. Quite slow. So we still got, what, an hour and a half on this one transect? Yeah, about. It's so exciting, though. I want to see a predation event. That'd be cool. Um. An hour and a half would put us at 2. I thought we were trying to do this till 2.30. Yeah, there's going to be another, yeah, yet another we'll, transect another after transect. this. We'll turn around and come back. Yeah. That's the plan. I mean, we got that other morning pretty well ready to go. All we got to do is reach out and cut the line. I know, Danny's like just itching to do it. It's like <laughs> I just want to cut it. Oh, it's, it's the, a, the dancing guy. It's a thousand meters we're doing. Yeah. I think Megan missed it. She was looking at the map. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, should be a half an hour per line. Oh, is it a worm? Yeah, it was the dancing inflatable tube worm. Ah. Or whatever you call it. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing <laughs> tube worm? Yeah. <laughs> that one. That one. Is that right? What? 30 meters a minute. No, 10 meters a minute. Sorry, an hour. Yeah. An hour per line. An hour to go. Yeah, thousand. okay. Right? We're doing 0.3 of a knot, which is uh, 10 meters a minute, roughly. Yeah, that makes sense. So that looks about how fast we're calling. Or call oh, no. Call. Not an hour. 10 meters a minute. That should be easy math. Thousand minutes. Thousand minutes. One thousand minutes. That's um, Is that right. Is that right? Yeah. Thousand so this minutes? should be like a twenty-minute uh, uh, transect, and it's not. Oh, thousand minutes. Wait, that's not. Thousand right. minutes sounds like four hours or I something. Think you're off by or a like zero. Five or yeah. More. So hundred minutes. Hundred minutes. Sorry. Thousand. Oh, so okay. I was like a thousand minutes. That means this would have been like, like half a, a day or something. An hour and forty <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Sorry, I missed the zero. So if we bump it up to uh, you know point four knots. Point five would be an hour. <clears throat> Megan, what's an ideal speed for a transect? Uh, 
Point well, three. we know that 0.5 was too fast, so 0.3 is great. Okay. But science wise, 0.5 would be great, but we don't want to do anything crazy to our tether. Gotcha. 100s and hundreds of kilometers of survey and they, yeah, half a half a knot max. They want 0.25 meters a second. Mm -hmm. The surveyors can't annotate faster than that. I mean, like I would be scrolling through this faster. Well, I wouldn't watch it real time. They're annotating real time, yeah. Yeah, they're annotating real time, which is you want to go slow enough so you can catch all this stuff because. Yeah. You know, while you're typing something, you're not looking, and you could be missing stuff. Fortunately, things are spaced out at a pretty good pace where you might not miss too much, but it's definitely better to go back and, and annotate post just because then you can stop and mm. look stuff up. And take and a break. Ta yeah, and make sure you, you're, uh, you know, you can look at the substrate, you can look at behavior. You, you know, you might see it. that one worm, but you might see not, not see the other worm. And do you create two separate annotations for two separate worms, or do you do it as one because they're the same worm? Yeah. And then also, if you want to do, like, point localizations, uh, you can't really do that um, live. That's the Paleopatites grisius. The that flat one? looking sea cucumber thing? Yeah, the sort of flat looking sea cucumber. <laughs> that looks like the ocean floor has become part of it? Or yeah, is it they, camouflaged? It's just camouflaged. It's a, Well, it's kind of flat, so the, Still the kind dust, of dust settles on it a little yeah. bit. I yeah. do love that bubble. That purple, yeah, that guy was like a chunky one too. Yeah, yeah all those other paleobodites are really, really fluffy. Mm -hmm. Oh, another flat one. Oh, well, there's a, s a swimmer. It's a there swimmer. It is. Yeah, it's swimming. It's weird that USBO suddenly gone, lost its brain. Yeah. I see that. It does that sometimes. It's okay. <laughs> It'll figure it out. Oh no, Atalanta. She's just jumping all over the place. Hercules is too. Look at all those blue yeah. dots are all over. We're going way out here. Yeah. That's usually when I turn them off and turn them back on. What's that? Oh, if I turn them off and turn them back on, half the time that stops. But it's not a big deal. We know where we are. Right there. Yeah, right there. We know where we're going. So even though it's being a bit silly, it's uh, it's all right. Our headings are pretty matched, aren't they? Yeah. They tightened up a little bit. Now they're matched and uh, they're wonky on the nav screen. So. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yep. Earlier they were matched on the nav screen and wonky on the GUI. Oh, there's Something. another one of those mean opposite ice pods. Uh, they oh, like yeah. are so long. I love it. I'm this a bit sad that I, I screwed up my landing on that one. I wanted to get close. I was a little, a little too ambitious. I want to print one. You print yourself an isopod? Yeah. Yeah, I want, a, I want an isopod print. I can keep with all my other isopods on my desk. I told Johnny I wanted uh, that bamboo under my doorstep when I got home. <laughs> and he's like, ah, I'll think about it. Creality just released one now. No thanks. It's a rip off, 100%. Probably. Every one of the Creality uh, knockoffs have been horrible. The only Creality that's been getting good was the OG3. Which was a knockoff of another printer. I think I'll stick they with my bamboo. Also, they have the cheaper version of the bamboo. 
Yeah, the P actually the P1S just is coming out. Did yeah. you see that? It's like a somewhere between that. What's the other one? The P1P, P1P and the X1 Carbon. If you're gonna go, go. That's basically where I'm looking at it. I don't know about the whole AMS thing. It's I love the AMS. Quite high maintenance. I have yet to have an issue with mine. I think you're on a boat. I think you're on a go, boat. I just had to go unclog it again today. For oh, really? Yeah. Um, I can't figure out how to get the tubes out of that little sensor on the back. Oh, they they come right out. You get, they've got a clip on them. you got to pull the clip. Oh, I haven't pulled the clip. That's why. Um, so do you pull the little thing out or push it in? So you push it in and then they make a tool. There's a tool you're supposed to print to slide in there to pull the, pull the tube. Uh, you can also use a flathead screwdriver, but it's kind of a pain. It is kind of a pain. Um, we need to print a Y, yeah, and I, see, I think now somebody enabled the off spool, the fourth or the fifth spool. I believe that was with the Ooh, last uh, look at that auto update. Yeah, that's a pretty one. Yeah, frilly. Uh, yeah. See, it's hard. It'd be hard to get that one to um, genus because I can't see the polyps. Mm. But it could be patella, or um, yeah, it could be patella. Nutella. Patella. Oh, you got me <laughs> excited. Yeah, I wish we had Nutella. I thought there was a jar at one point. No, was that there my imagination? There used to be giant tubes on each of the tables in the galley. Yeah, like yeah. I liked half the meter tube long tele. tubes. Never ending. Like, I've never seen one emptied. Was convinced it was the same one. <laughs> <laughs> no well, there's one was the No one was brave enough to try it. Psychopodies. Oh, yeah, the... Gummy Squirrel. Mm, the long yeah. one. I like that name. Gummy Squirrel. Mm -hmm. mm. It looks like a gummy squirrel, doesn't it? We love gummy squirrels. Now that you mention it, yeah. Like, if you're going to make a squirrel into a gummy, that's didn't what it looked like. Didn't we sample some gummy squirrels? Yeah, we got a lemon gummy squirrel. Yeah. In the CCZ. What is this guy? Uh, this is a banana slug. This is a blueberry slug. Uh. Blueberry? Yeah. Well, banana slugs are yellow, and this slug is blue, so it's a blueberry slug. <laughs> it's a good thing Dave's not here. He's put a ban against blueberries. <laughs> yeah. Those oh, when you recovered the hydrophone this uh, afternoon, evening, uh, did you spare the poor sea star that was on there, or did it come up? Uh, no, he he was uh, evicted from his home, and Aww. we found him really close to where it took off. Okay. So he probably find himself a new home. Okay, good. I, I'm glad uh, he wasn't sampled. <laughs> he got a. <laughs> he got an upgrade. He got a rapid altitude change of five meters when it popped out of the mud. <laughs> Like, yeah. Come up five meters and we're waiting, waiting, nothing happens. All of a sudden, pew! <laughs> we were at five <laughs> meters. <laughs> Oops. That mud was like, I'll never let go. <laughs> did we get wrapped around that or? No. What's that? We didn't get wrapped around that wire, did we? I pulled the wire all the way around Argus, yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. I wonder what these oh. mud enemies are. I was wondering what was going on. I was out yeah. in the room and I came in and there was uh, adults in here. Yeah. Pitter patter of large feet. There's a swimmer. Almost no drama. We walked it back around. I tried to move the ship because I don't want to, you know, grab a hold of it and fly it. But in the end, we had to. Oh, there's one of those isopods. It's swimming. Yeah. There's so many of them. There's another one. It's like running. <laughs> it's definitely a change of to see a seafloor that's so abundant of life compared to the abyssal plain we're used to. Oh, I mean, the abyssal plain's like twice as deep. And there's just like nothing there. I mean, there's stuff. You just can't yeah, see it. Yeah, every couple hundred uh, meters you'll see like, oh, look, there's a 
cucumber. Oh, look, an urchin. You get the Ceratospis monstrosus. Those big red shrimps. Yeah, and some sea pens. Yeah, well, lots of umbalulas at Station oh, Aloha. Lots of umbalulas. If you want umbalulas, you can like make a whole bouquet of umbalula. And they're the little ones. Except for that one big one that we found, remember? Yeah, the one that they the, wanted the me to chop the top off of. Yeah. And I did. Oh. Shoved it in a box. I'd never seen that one before. It was really cool. Hmm. No. I'm surprised we don't see any umbalula around here. Oh, what, is, nice. what is that? A sponge. That's yeah. a cool sponge. Yeah. I mean, I could. Yeah, there's a, the sponges, the like, they have these um, roots that they'll put down. They're, they're not really roots. They're just glass spicules that act kind of like roots to keep them out of the mud. Yeah, I was wondering what they do when they're on the sand like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's usually, you know, most like demo sponges and things, they'll, they'll need like a solid substrate to adhere to. Yeah, these ones that live in the mud um, make like a, a stalk of spicules or they'll have a bunch of like long spicules that stick out at different angles and root in the mud. I see. Yeah, so just like one long piece of glass. So those little like bulb ones, those are our demo sponges. And then that one was likely like a glass a sponge. Hexactinidae or whatever it's called. Hexactinality? Yes, I can't pronounce it, but my heart's in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hex meaning uh, six. So the spicules uh, in the glass sponges Ooh. have six. Uh, points. Hello, Mr. Crab. Or yeah, nice like crab. We haven't just seen a crab on the floor in a while. It's usually on a IP. <laughs> it's right yeah. down the middle, too. He's got oh, a toolbox. little strut in him. Yeah. 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 Look at you, crab. He's like, I'll fight you. He also has a little polyp friend on his leg. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's like the, the tubular um, hydrozoans that yeah. we were seeing all over the moorings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those things will settle pretty much anywhere on hard substrate. And there's not a lot that to choose from, so crab it is. Or, hey, look at the moorings. Yeah, no housing crisis down here, that's for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. We never did tilt Danny Cam, did we? No. No, you guys keep forgetting. There's so many other there. things to remember. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll have a whole 13 hours of mapping to enjoy. We're yeah. going to be taxonomic what, experts by the end of this. I think it's, I like it at that angle. I can see back into oh. the, see the box and the camera. Oh, that's a pretty tomato. Yeah, I just want to get the uh, armpits out, the lights out of the bottom. A little red jelly. The hot spots mm -hmm. on Those the Those things camera. are like impossible to ID. Yeah. Messing with the uh, iris. There's so many different real little red jellies. And that one was that small. That turn into small ones, big ones, all kinds. Yeah, the big ones we know pretty well, but like those the smaller ones, there's just a, a lot of them and they all look very similar. Hmm. And when they're floating by, you know, you're, just, you're just not gonna get a, get a good enough view. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's up ahead? That looks weird. The formation? There's like, yeah, there's like some sort of hole. But not like the hole we landed right. on earlier. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, an on sonar. That's a cool hole. Uh-huh. There was like a herc size hole in the bottom, right where we came down this afternoon. Yeah, we had to go back and explore it again. It was real weird. Rennie wanted to see the hole, so oh. Rennie flew and looked at the hole. 
Yeah, see, that's what you get to do when you're a navigator and it's your birthday. No, he was flying. Oh, yeah, see, that's what you get to do when you're a navigator. It's your birthday. You can go look at what you want. <laughs> really, take me to the hole. Take me to the hole. Did you go and see that sea star down in there? We didn't go in the hole. Oh. oh. Well, you didn't look at the stuff in the hole? Well, we couldn't. The uh, leash wouldn't let us. Oh. oh. And we had a cable coming up, so we couldn't move. That's her. Did we determine what that was or what originated that? Some sort of sampling thing. Yeah, I think uh, Dirk was saying something like it was an old site for um, other instrumentation that was pre-ONC. One of the boreholes for the see, corks. Oh, One of the thing. corks, yeah. maybe, yeah. See the, the C pen? It's really cool. I think it's like a Kofo Bolemnon, but it's got like two heads. Plus, you don't have your laptop out, you're just annotating as we. Oh, I'm, I'm not doing that. I got other things to look at. I got plenty of things to look at. <laughs> <laughs> What's in those holes? <laughs> I have tried to annotate while like driving. It's it's not it's not feasible. No. Got while, so many other things going on. While Such driving? A, while Well like you know, trying to Driving talk a car. And, <laughs> no, not driving a car. Okay. By be, <laughs> being being in the van. Well that kinda sounds like a car too. And try to like Annotate on C tube and also lead like the a dive. Shark egg or something. A shark mm -hmm. egg. Call it online, online or offline. Online annotating. Yeah, Can online real annotating. Time? Yeah, yeah, real time annotating in C tube. It also makes it difficult when your internet isn't always, you know, the fastest. But today our internet was great. Well, there's a cool coral over there. Internet's great right now because it's with the ships on Starlink. I know. It was good. I was able to get some work done today. And I did laundry. Woo! So productive. Ooh. And it doesn't hurt that we're on very smooth waters right now. Oh, yeah. It was a beautiful day. <laughs> So I'm sad that it's cloudy because I heard that we could see the northern lights. Yeah. That is sad because that would be something that would be really cool to see. Yeah, I've never awesome. seen it. I haven't either. It's on my bucket list. But I'll have to come back here and do some cold water coral diving at some point. Go to Iceland and you'll see it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Iceland's a lot further away. Yeah. Yeah, but it's good to explore the world. I do want to go to Iceland sometime. Me too. Is it better um, in the wintertime or the summertime? It depends on what you're in for. Go really for the want. Northern Lights. Uh, I don't know that answer. Mm -hmm. I've just been there and it was there. I don't know <laughs> if it changes. It's mostly based on solar flares. Oh, okay. The, the timing of... Somebody's going to correct me, but it's basically related to solar flares okay. and then atmospheric conditions, not so mm -hmm. much summer or winter. Ooh, look at all those. Yep. A lot a of lot flat of, ones. Yeah, a lot of Paleopodites grius and one uh, regular Paleopodites. Yeah. He's mourning his fallen, flattened friends. Mm -hmm. and there's a Tinafore. Oh, that's interesting looking. I, li I like the red Tinafore. So the camouflaged one's still alive or...? Oh yeah, you're, they're, they're happy. They're just oh, flat. They're just flat. And yeah. They weren't really flattened by anything. <laughs> they're just naturally flat, you know? They're for. Did you just get loud in here? The uh, fans started blowing more. We got a bunch of these frailid sea stars. I've been seeing those. There's like tiny cucumbers. Pete, did you turn the fans on loud? Oh, a skate. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a skate. I haven't touched them. Oh. Bathy Raja.
Yeah, we don't get skates over in Hawaii. We do have some pretty cool rays, though. Mm -hmm. mm. I can see a 13 on that wrap. Do skates look like they're smiling, like rays look like they're smiling? Yeah. They've got similar mouth structure situation. They just have a slightly different shape and lobate parts of their tail and a shorter tail. Yeah. I mean, if you ever want to have a really good experience. See, this one, the sea star to... is feeding because its arms are up in the water column. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, that's how they eat is... Uh, they feed off things that are passing by, and so when they're in that posture, they're actively feeding. Hmm. They, they're not, um, to try, well, they don't like move around on the seafloor to find food, they, mm -hmm. they catch it. So I think it's interesting. They have like these little sticky little balls on, on the ends of their, uh, um, like their, yeah, their, their feet, their legs. So like on their legs, there's like the little spikes on their legs and the ends of those spikes have little sticky balls for catching particles. How do they get the, how do they get the particles from their little sticky balls? They pass the it down. Yeah, with just their little tube feet. The little tube feet, they just pass it down. Oh. Huh. Toward the mouth. Like Which a little is on assembly the bottom. line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unlike an octopus. Yeah. Exactly like an octopus. So that's an octopus mouth on my shirt? Yeah. You knew that. I know. What were the guys with their hands in the air? The Frialidae. Frialidae? Mm-hmm. Hands in the air like this. Okay. What's their common name? Is they don't really have one. They're just like a deep sea sea star. You just call him Patrick. <laughs> uh, well, Patrick had less arms. Actually, we did see a Patrick today. Uh, a standard. Uh, Contraster is the Patrick C star. Oh, look at that guy. Yeah, there's some brittle stars buried in the sand. Mud. Hey, Megan, can you press that blue button over there for me? Oh, yeah, sure. That blue button. What does the blue button do? Blue things. The blue button. Blue button has yeah. so turns on the data. Gives us blue data. Yeah. Sea cucumber. Yeah. Uh, why am I not getting it? Watch, watch this oh, star go. Yeah. Ooh, breaststroke. It's running as fast as it can. <laughs> Am I connected to it? Don't no. do it, Hinshot. Don't do I'm it. Not. <laughs> <laughs> How do they scrape up enough energy to do that? Well, my blue data is good. Oh, to like scoot away like yeah, that? Yeah, so quickly like that. They, you know, brittle stars, even in shallow water, move that fast. Really? They, they're really actually good movers. I and mean, half the time they're just laying under the, the, the sediment. Yeah, sorry, Megan, Ooh. you'll have to press it again when oh. you get a chance. There are some spoke trails. You should watch out for those. So sometimes when you see these holes on the bottom, mm. you'll see these like little spokes uh, oh, where the, yeah. the sediment has been moved around. So there's little animals that live in there um, called peanut worms. And they, they'll just poke out their proboscis and, and they'll go and grab stuff from around, mm -hmm. and once they've like grabbed all the food, uh, they'll move burrows to a different location. Mm. But it's really fun when you do get to see their proboscis sticking out. Does it look like a peanut? Um, no, the proboscis kind of just looks like, um, you know those like silly hands, those gummy ones that you used to get in like- Oh yeah, the oh, sticky yeah. hands. The sticky hands, it looks like that. 
and it kind of moves like that too. Like so, huh. like it reaches out and then like grabs stuff and then scoops it back. But the animal kind of is sort of a elongate kind of cucumbery sack. This is much more exciting than a blue water survey. I know a lot more about this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mostly on the blue water, we've been seeing just jellies. Yeah, well, that's yep. what you're going to see. The fish will actively avoid the ROV, so mm -hmm. we don't see a lot of them. And a lot of the things in the midwater are very small, so we don't always see them. Oh, those menopsids, they're just so big. That's a nice starfish. Is that one a slimy star? Yep, that one's a slime star, Hymenaster. I wonder what the biomass of the ocean is. Huge. Yeah. I'm think, sure someone's calculated it. Yeah, think of all, like, every single animal that humans, like, culture and farm, and add them all together, and the biomass of the ocean is still much, much larger than that. I mean, the oceans do cover 70% of the planet. Yeah. So I wonder what the biomass in like a square meter is. Like you get a square meter of sunlight, you can calculate that. It's a known number, right? Mm hmm Well, that, that number will change with depth in the ocean. All right. And where you're located, too. And so if it's a productive area, like, you know, offshore of a productive continental slope, here, like here, we're going to get a lot more biomass than what you might see, you know, at the same depth in Hawaii, which is oligotrophic. So if you had to, like, average it for... Average like, it? The first uh, 10 meters of the... I, I just, I don't have that number. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, what that biomass is. And, and how you calculate your biomass is also different. Some people do wet weight, some people do dry weight. Oh, look, a light parrot. Okay, it went away. We do love me some snailfish. <laughs> Has, have they done any calculations for certain areas? Oh, I'm sure they have. Oh, that was a lot of yeah. worms. Yeah. I, I would just have to find those papers and, and read them. How, I wonder how they figure that out. Um, probably box core. Oh, if you want to look for biomass in, in the benthic. In the benthic you know, sediment, it's really easy to do that way. It, um, when you're trying to calculate in an area like the midwater, you have your trawls, you can trawl through. It's still right. gonna miss some stuff like jellies, but the jellies don't make up a lot of the biomass just because they're mostly water. We used to do uh, plankton toes. We had these giant mm -hmm. nets, probably about this big around. We put two of them on the top of the vehicle but at the end was only like this little, like a jam size cup. Wow. And she would get maybe an inch in that after we towed that thing around for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're just, you're just getting plankton, plankton. Yeah, they were small. plankton toes, right? Plankton nets. It's crazy that some whales, or whales eat that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, the krill. Yeah. You know, it's really fascinating is like when you run into, well, I guess a school of krill, I'm not sure what you call like a massive krill, but like, it's like a cloud. 
it's so dense that you can't see through it with the ROV. Mm. Wow. You know, it, it, it can completely black out your camera if you go oh. straight through it. It's a nice skate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we were trying to do a metrology job in the North Sea and we had all these, they were like those little aluminum benches you sit on. Yeah. And we put out like hundreds of them, but I don't know, days putting all these out. <laughs> and the curl came, or, I don't know, there were some little, they were so yeah. thick that they couldn't, we were supposed to put all these out in this arrangement and then go take do all these photographs and they had all these markers on them. Couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to do like flashy lights and put a bunch of flashy lights over here and then we like turn on, turn those on, go over there, turn those on. Go over, turn off our lights, sit for a minute, and turn our lights on and go like two or three meters and then whoosh. Oh yeah, and then just <laughs> all come at you. It's nuts. I was annotating some uh, videos from the Atlantic coast and, and there was just a mass that would follow the ROV and would just uh, keep out in front of it. But the moment yeah. they stopped to look at something, it would just like overtake it <laughs> and black everything out. I forget what kind of, there are some kind of fish, they would just, thousands of them be swimming in a circle around, like a vortex around the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And they, when they come through the lights in the front, you could see them feeding, and then they would go around and... Oh, that's hmm. cool. Yeah, it was really weird. That's wild. So, according to the forecast Saturday night's supposed to be a, a decent shot of seeing All right. the northern lights assuming there's no clouds oh okay so tomorrow night because I guess technically we're Friday right now mm -hmm. that is true I thought it was last night or tonight yeah but there was clouds we stood outside for a little bit yeah couldn't see a single star yeah yeah, really weird. The barometer's pegged at 30. It's clear sky above us now, according to Wendy. Not that I would know because we're in here. <laughs> I'm going to say if someone's outside, they can maybe check for us. What's that? Oh, say so check the deck cameras or the bow cam, but the bow cam You won't be able to see yeah, the stars in that. Too much light back that way. Well, that's why I was saying the bow cam, but I don't think the bow cam's in existence right now. Nope, it'll be there in a couple weeks. Or in a week. Yeah, but the camera still won't be able to see the stars. I'm we could call the bridge and ask. I'm sure, I'm <laughs> sure uh, the bridge would love to hear your voice. <laughs> Bridge now. Good morning. We were wondering if you could see any stars. No, no stars. Oh, bummer. It's cloudy. According to Wendy, it wasn't cloudy, so we just had to, you know, get confirmation for someone yeah, who actually is looking outside. <laughs> yeah, apparently, uh, if we were able to see north, we could possibly see the northern lights. Yeah, well, maybe maybe when it, it clears up. It's supposed to be clear in a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, that's all good. Just uh, cross your fingers for clear weather so we can see the northern lights. All right, thanks. So what is ONC doing with this transect and other transects that we've been doing? Yeah. Um, so I can't say for certain where this information is ultimately going, but we do have a few resident scientists that go through this and uh, publish papers based on this work. So okay. they'll, you know, uh, we have Fabio DeLeo, who was here 
earlier, and we also have uh, Paula Correa at ONC. And uh, yeah, they're currently looking at this type of information um, to find out biodiversity statistics of our bioregions. And uh, yeah, like it, it'll basically support their scientific papers um, regarding the uh, biodiversity of like Cascadia Basin, um, wherever we're taking these transects. So, does it impact what the company does in terms of the instrumentation installations, or where is are these two different? Um, it's kind of, so these are kind of opportunistic uh, in that no more than a half you know I sure like if if there's some <laughs> rare discovery or something uh, we're probably going to avoid installation on that specific site unless we can prove that it's not going to negatively affect whatever's there Thank um, you. but yeah as for you know like impacts on on where we put our infrastructure I think like if anything would probably be more inclined to put infrastructure in areas that are deemed interesting to observe so um, might be the opposite effect if okay. we can prove otherwise okay no, that's cool thank you yeah But yeah, we're also looking to <clears throat> we're looking to contribute this information to uh, global repositories for this kind of biodiversity information. So things like OBIS, um, where you can like just deposit this kind of like species presence or absence information, uh, could be really useful in determining like global biodiversity statistics and and seeing changes of biodiversity throughout time going forward. It's uh, one of the, it's actually, um, it's, an it's an initiative of the United Nations uh, right now for the decade of ocean science to, um, to track these kind of biostatistics best we can. So yeah, we're trying to contribute what, what we can to uh, OBIS. That's really great, you know, because, you know, as, if you're using um, OBIS, you're getting data from all over the world, not just, you know, your local area. Uh, and especially when you compare, you know, off the coast of Canada to, you know, the west coast of the United States, these are not separate areas in the ocean. There's a lot of crossover of habitat between these two areas. So if you have data from cruises off the coast of California and Oregon, um, and you compare it to these sites that we're surveying, uh, that'll better inform uh, us about what the environment is like, what the uh, ecology is like across our whole west coast. Yeah, exactly. It's a joint effort to monitor our world's oceans, so. Mm -hmm. And since the deep seas, I'm guessing, are relatively close in temperature. Oh, yeah, it's all the same. There's more commonality the deeper you go than there is difference. Is that correct statement or? Yeah, I'd say so. You do see a lot of similarity in the types of animals you're seeing. Um, there are some animals that you're only finding in certain places, but that's usually like on sea mounts, you might see some endemism, but like across the coast here, we're going to probably see the same animals over yep. and over again. And you're not going to see any difference between, you know, the course, the, the coast of Washington and right. here. It's going to be very similar because they're only a few miles away, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so to draw this demarcation line in the ocean be like this is Canadian Ocean this is like American Ocean and and we're just we have different creatures on yeah, our side uh, yeah <laughs> we're, yeah there's yeah. different the, the creatures are crossing all the time there's no boundaries in the ocean the ocean is entirely connected to itself and sometimes we forget that and, and maybe not a scientist forget that but I feel like a lot of 
you know, our policymakers forget these things. Mm -hmm. Is yep. that if if we have different policies for protecting parts of the ocean, it, it's not going to be as effective. So here's a diving in because I'm stupid in this area. Mm -hmm. um, what? How does the biodiversity change when you have different substrates of layers of different types of sea life? So in other words, when you go to the warmer waters on the upper sections of the ocean, mm -hmm. does that impact ultimately what comes down to the deep sea? Or not as much as you would think? So the surface waters do directly impact what you see in the deep sea. Okay. And that's basically based on the productivity that you see at the surface. So primary productivity at the surface is going to influence the amount of food making it down to the deep. So if you have higher primary productivity in an area, you're gonna have more productivity, more animals seen down deep. The less you see uh, in the surface water, the less animals, because it's just not gonna support as much. And as you go deeper in the ocean, you see um, let less density just because there is less food but in some cases like hydrothermal vents and the sea fields that we've been visiting uh, that's not the necessarily the case you could have low primary productivity in those areas but you're having extremely high densities because these are chemosynthetic communities that aren't connected to the surface in terms of where they find their food yeah that kind of stuff's really interesting to me because, you know, when you think about most of the entire planet's um, ecosystem, it's all essentially supported by the sun and the energy the sun brings to the planet, which is captured by autotrophs. But, yeah, for these chemosynthetic communities, like you see down in the hydrothermal vents, they're actually completely cut off from that joint circuit. And so they, they have their completely independent food web going on, uh, which, for ex example, if the sun just decided to disappear one day, you know, all life would cease except maybe those communities. Exactly. I'm guessing especially near the vents where you have heat and other sources mm -hmm. of energy. Mm-hmm. Well, and also that like a lot of life is dependent on ocean circulation, which is driven by, you know, having ice formation at the, uh, the northern Atlantic and in the Antarctic. So if we are no longer having that ice formation and deep water formation in those areas, uh, that could actually shut down the circulation in the oceans and the way our deep sea communities are actually like working. So of, that'll have yeah. a oh, like a huge impact on our planet. A lot of oxygen in that ice. Oh yeah, uh, that's you know that deep water sequesters a lot of carbon as well. Yep. Yep. Well, we're getting there. It's like around 400 meters to go. 400? No, it's like 150. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, just for this one line, though, yeah. Yeah. Well, to to get to the end of our kilometer transect, mm -hmm. and then we'll turn, we'll make a screeching stop, <laughs> and make a giant left turn to our next waypoint. Who's our next waypoint? Yeah, over here. Gotcha. It, it's about 300 meters away. 300 but on meters away. Yeah. But we don't have to transect that. <coughs> no. Yeah. We, we can mosey in. Um, maybe not mosey, but like look at shit on the way. I mean, you can fly. Well, we have to move the ship. We, ha we do have to move the ship. But we'll have to wait until Atalanta swings under to call it good on the uh, stop there, and then then we can start moving.
Oh, I love when they bloop like that. There are just so many more jellies over here. <laughs> yeah. Jellies. Well, that's a uh, half an hour ride just to start the next transect. Yeah. I'm not going to have time to do the next transect. They want to be done by 3. At 2.30. Uh, I mean, honestly, it would I mean, be better. It's only one o'clock now. It so. would be better to not go to this start point and start our transect, um, and, and go to the middle point of it. But that that's a back row decision, and um, and AJ is gone. Yeah. If it was me. Well, they wanted to be. <laughs> they wanted to be back in the morning at 0300. Yeah, and it, the best way to get back would be to just drive in a, a kilometer towards it well, there's and then dogleg it back. Still a half an hour to go on this, and that's an hour and a half right back, so if we still turned a around. Half an hour to go no, we meters. have like 100 meters left. Oh, 100 meters, sorry. Yeah. yeah I think so we, what uh, do we say is hour and 40 minutes for... So you got to start the next transect at... Oh, right. I just can't hear myself. No, I'm good. Um, where was I? Uh, hour and 40 minutes, so you'd have to start the next transect in 10 minutes to make it back at 3 o'clock. Is that right? Sounds about right. It would be better if we just started going back. We just ended the transect now and... No, no, we'll do the full transect. We could do a uh, oh. half a knot back. That would knock it down to... Sean, AJ might be on deck because he was on deck playing games with Dirk. I don't see him down there. Oh, you don't? That would knock no, it down. Oh, oh, I think he's social, social deck. deck, yeah. Oh, on the social deck? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it might be worth it to ask him um, if it's like super critical that we go to the starting point of seven because that's going to take a lot of time. Uh, yeah. We could go to the midpoint of seven um, and then drive back. Stand by. We could do a random dog leg on the way back and then out. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is we go if we dog leg to the midpoint of seven. Yeah. Uh, then we can start our transect right away instead of, you know, puttering over to this random start point. Just let us know. We're driving the bus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't really care, but, you know, if we've got, a, if it's cr more critical and more useful to get another transect and I don't think it really matters to, if you have to do one of these random ones. Uh, but I, I get it. I mean, it's not like they're like chose this area for it to, you know. I, I mean, we can use one of the points on. We've used the midpoint of seven. That's going to be random enough. It's going to take us out to here, and then we'll go back, and that will keep us from having to. I think they would be happy to get transect the, data yeah. wherever. Then you get transect data. Right. Uh, hundred. How many? How far to go, Megan? How About far on this 90, one? Ninety meters. You stop the boat short somewhere or how much left on the move uh the boat what's what's what she got what's he got left on the, the boat has got a like hundred meters left we're, we're basically like all in the same spot so it's 100 meters left Raj, well we have the probably 40 50 meters swing in of atlanta yeah well that's but a good 10 minutes there so 
since we're we're right in line with where he's gonna stop, that means that we can stop the transect then. Yeah, but what I'm saying is Atlanta will keep moving for oh, yeah, for yeah. your fifty meters, right? Yeah, exactly. It'll it'll keep moving. Looks like we're right underneath Atlanta with the camera. We are right here, right here actually. The yeah. head of your blue dots. Well, there's a neat star. Looks like a dead chicken. Oh. <laughs> it's just, it looks like a cookie star to me. I wonder, do OET ever do like contests with their viewers or anything? Like, you know, get a free hat if you watch the stream and you, you know. No, they don't do any swag giveaway. I've gotten in trouble before for suggesting. Oh, oh okay. Ah, yeah. oh, that was cool. I had, yeah, I started mentioning something about t-shirt contest or something. <laughs> they shut me down. Yeah, we'll do the whole next transect unless told otherwise. All right, well, so do we need to go to the specific start or can we just we're start gonna, going? We're going to do, do it in reverse, like we've been told. So... So we have to go to the start point. So the thing is that if we go to the start point, we're not going to make it back on time. For 0300? Right. That's fine. Well, we, we won't, yeah, there's just no way. We'll be too far away. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Well, it seemed like we really needed to be on time. And we're going to be like an hour late. I don't know. AJ wasn't there, Dirk was there. Oh, and Dirk doesn't care? Dirk said 0300 sounds too early. Okay. Well. Yeah, right. I thought it was, I thought it was early. Yeah. Did AJ know what we did, like what, time? what we did to prep? What like time does it get late? 4.30. We probably want to pop this thing. What time like, did they cut the last one? Well, we cut it quite late last time, like... Like 6 or something? Yeah, around 6-ish, maybe even 6.30. So, if we want it to, to get by, get to surface by sunrise, like 4.30 or 5 seems about right to me. I don't know how plenty yeah, of I don't, I don't know what the grand plan is. Yeah. Probably well, says, is says on the whiteboard. Oh, that, that's what it says on the whiteboard. It's just that if we have to transit 300 meters to a next start point, there's just no way we'll get back to the IP in time for for a sunrise recovery. No. I'm for, for an early recovery. Yep. So we'll be recovering the ROVs an hour later at, at least. Yeah, I think it says 0630 ROVs on deck, so that means off bottom at, uh, what's that math? Like, like 25 meters a minute. Four. 2,600 meters. Hmm. I'd have to get a calculator out. Here you go. That's your job. <laughs> so the trip time up is, they need to know these numbers. That's about two hours. 104 minutes. 104. At 25 meters a minute? Yeah. Hour and a half? That doesn't sound right. Yeah, I thought it was about, it's about two hours. So two hour right up, so I'd have to be leaving bottom at 4.30. Mm -hmm. And well, they usually stand the ship off and wait, so that's probably a half hour to move the ship. 
So that's at 0400 if they cut at 0400. They might make a 630 recovery. Ooh, there's a sea spider. Oh, that oh, is a yeah. sea spider. It's a classic one. Yeah. Oh, it looks like he's macking on something, too. Oh, yeah. They, they eat um, clams or what is that? No, no they eat uh, anemones and things. Ooh, and there's an acorn worm making it spirally poop. I love that. <laughs> that was a great spot. <laughs> We Red. saw so many of those on an A149. Yeah. Big ones with a big purple head. Oh, yeah. Big spiral. You know, you know what those are called? They're called Yoda. <laughs> Yoda. Yoda. Yoda's. Yoda is their genus name. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, the first couple were really cool, and then like after we saw, I don't know, tons of them. They yeah, they're like, yeah, over it. Yeah, totally over it. <laughs> <laughs> Yoda purple rata. That's what those are called. They're pretty cool. They're huge. So when they're going poop, why in a spiral? I don't know. But the force it's of always the poop leaving the body turns See, the body, turns them just there's enough. There's yeah. spirally poop. They're just really why? like pooping in a circle. It's like driving with a flat tire. They Well, they just, yeah, but when do they like break out of the circle and start a new one? Or do they do that their whole lives and is that their whole... <laughs> That's well, their whole they, thing. Their whole thing, they, right? They do, like, putter they, on to a different location, and they'll start the cycle again. This is a really cool spot. <laughs> well, what made this thing? It's like um, zigzag. Looks like a sea cucumber trail or something. Yeah, probably yeah. a cucumber. That's like a 90-degree angle right there. <laughs> yeah, yep. well, that one's a very Looks like one of our transects. One. He's like, nope, not going this way. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where they came from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cucumbers. Sea Maybe cucumber transects. <laughs> that's a great one. What's this thing? It looks a little weird. Yeah. Whatever it is, it doesn't look to be doing too well. No. Cluster bait. Oh, there's another one. Maybe it kind of looks coral-like. Mm. Yeah, like maybe they're just like jellies. Because I've been seeing a lot of like jelly stuff. Does deep sea jellyfish sting? Yeah. They all sting, don't they? Yeah. Mm. Except for the ones that don't sting. Yeah. Um, in Which that ones lake? don't sting? The, oh. There's that, that, those clown. ones in, yeah, in the lake. In jellyfish yeah. lake. So... The boat's been stopped for a while. I think we're getting pretty close. Gets I thought pretty that close they here. still stung, but it was so small that you just can't feel it. Um, no, they just, they don't have nematocysts. Mm. That's why they don't sting. Looks like another quarter ship knife. I have swam in that before. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. uh, that sounds Palau. awesome. How long to the end? I would uh, we're say... All, we're, like, there. I would well, say... Atlantis about <laughs> under its launch position. Um, we've been typically I don't know, up to the north, maybe 20 meters from here. North, sorry, northwest is where it's. But Kay. it's you can see uh, Hercules slowly yeah. flying I'll out of its moving. box there. Bridge nav. So we're going to move to gonna end the right. lat long three. So we are um, going to move to this point that I selected in high pack. Right, it's about 300 there. meters away. We can go there at 0.3 knots. Uh, yeah. I think it's a, uh, yeah, 221, great. 222 two, two is cool too. Whichever number, like, strikes your fancy as being better. <laughs> 